What's up everybody and welcome back to my let's play of Xenoblade Chronicles. In the last episode, we consoled with Dunban to find out what our next objective is, and that is to rescue Fiora. And so, we've been set with the task of heading off towards Valley Mountain in hopes of heading off eventually to Sword Valley and then Galahad Fortress in hopes of finding her. But, before we do all that, there are a ton of things left inside of the world of Bionis that we can actually still take care of before we head off uh, that way. So, uh, I would rather kind of get that out of the way first. So, just want to let you guys know, I mentioned this at the end of the last episode, but this episode, and probably like the next two or three, um, are definitely going to be almost purely side quests. So, um, first things first, we have a Nopon researcher here. Help! Someone help! Don't just look, help! Bridge broken. It's so inconvenient. Hmm, no problem. I don't... I now know what to do. If we know fixed bridge, it'd be a problem for Napon to get back to village. You must grab materials to fix bridge. Need ho hoed planks and row axe crest. Alright, and I'm missing five hoed planks. I only have two of them, so... Yeah, we have, to, we have the uh, uh, the axe um, crest, the rogal axe crest. That's totally fine. Uh, but we do need uh, some of the other materials. Um... So, um, I guess we better head off towards another area of Magna Forest, specifically the Windmill Pavilion, but I do want to mention something real quick. So, obviously, I mentioned before that, um, when we skip travel, we're not, like, teleporting. We are skip traveling. We're just not watching the party run all the way back to where they were. So, we, our party is literally jumping off of this bridge, landing in the water, swimming all the way upstream over here, going all the way around, all the way over here just for some uh, wood. And then, in order to get back, they have to go back to Arid Sea, call this thing back, the pod landings, the pod. They have to go back to Arid Sea, all the way back to Alkamoth, and ride this thing all the way back to get over here. It's absolutely insane. But anyway, with all that being said, um, I do want to head over to the Windmill Pavilion because obviously these hoads right down here uh, are going to have the materials that we need. So... Let's uh, take care of these guys if we can. Let's see if what Ricky and Ryan can do, along with Melia. Um, I do believe I've shown Melia's Spear Break and Starlight Kick. Uh, and she got a topple. Sweet. Uh, I actually killed him, but whatever. Hey, I'll take it. We'll do another Bolt. And we'll cast another Summon Bolt and a Summon Flare. We're just spamming arts as Melia. Honestly, we can kind of afford it, though, because these enemies are quite weak. All right, let's see if we got one from these guys. Okay, there's one. Um, I'm just going to skip ahead, though, until I get the other ones that I need. So uh, I'll just cut back uh, to the bridge once I've gotten all of these hood planks. So I'll see you guys in just a moment. All right, buddy, we got all the hood planks. Got all materials. Wow, you collect all so quickly. I fixed bridge now. Wait for me. It all thanks to you. This such happy day. All not, I'm really grateful to you. I fixed bridge, but you ones who got materials. All right, sweet. And they run off. And so the quest is complete. Not bad. We got a jaw nibbler for Ricky. I'll have to take a look at that a little bit later on. But... We can also run on this and look, find the location repaired bridge for for just a little bit of extra XP. So, uh, seems a little bit like cheating maybe for some extra XP uh, for a location that uh, we kind of made ourselves with repairing the bridge. But now we can make our way back to Magna Forest uh, nice and easy. So, yeah, not too bad. So, those are the three bridges that we crossed the first time that we were here. Uh, and now here's the fourth one. Luckily, though, that is the last bridge uh, in this area. So... No worrying about any more bridges or anything like that. But, uh, yeah, this takes us to an entirely new area of Magna Forest, which is uh, pretty, pretty cool. So, with all that done, that's actually all I want to do in Magna Forest. But, um, I actually do want to head all the way back um, to where it started. Everything started. So, um, let's head back over, I believe, towards Gym Man's stall in Colony 9. Because uh, there's a couple of things that I want to do. Uh, in this area so let's see I think he's right over here and it's Rocco so let's talk to him what's up buddy Hello. you like solving problems don't you well I've got a whopper 
I broke my mom's pendant. She get, she loves it so much. Dad gave it to her. Now mom's super angry and keeps making horrible mush for dinner. Hmm, my problem. If I don't eat some real food and fast, my tongue's gonna fall off. I try to fi find someone who can fix my mom's pendant, but no one in the residential district can do it. I can't walk very far on my own. So could you find someone instead? All right, so we can find someone who can mend the keepsake. Um, now, I do want to mention, though, that if you take on this quest as uh, Shulk, he'll actually tell you who to find. Thanks, are you big time. By the way, whatever you do, don't tell Sonya about this. She's my mom. I'm so sure that your issue will be attended to with haste. All right, so let's take this pendant uh, and take care of this kid. Ooh, a spider's web. I wonder what that is. It's an achievement. Um, however, ooh, actually, really quickly, can I talk to you, Paola, and see if we can... You think girls can be just as good friends as boys? Prove it. I won't believe it unless you can prove it to me. Maybe I need both of them in the party at the same time. Um, let me add Charlotte to the party real quick and see if we can add something here for this quest. Okay, it's so weird. It's like she has a quest for us, but can't seem to do anything about it. Um, anyway, uh, we'll just add Ryan back in, whatever. Doesn't matter. Um, but what we want to do is actually head over to the military district. So, uh, I want to meet you guys, uh, right on up here. You can see the marker on our map. I guess I want to meet you. He's going to be standing, like, right out here. And sure enough, here he is on the middle of the day. This is Dean. What's up, buddy? I only li ever listen to requests from people in my profession. If I've heard any everyone's request, I would never get anything done. If you have a request to make, please have Shulk ask me. Oh, <laughs> Well, uh, I guess this is technically Shulk's quest, so I guess we'll ask him as Shulk. Got something to ask. I need you to fix a pendant that a boy named Roko broke. I usually, only, I usually just tell people to sort out their own problems, but I suppose I'll, he's just a kid. Okay, I'll take a look. I can fix this in no time. Hold on a moment. Here, good as new. Roko, Roko. My name sounds familiar. Isn't he Sonya's little boy? No, that's him. Make sure you say it was I who fixed it for him. That's all I need. No, that's all the things I need. And we have the fixed pendant, so uh, let's return to Rocco. Hello. You got it fixed? Wow, you really did it. It's just like it was before. Who fixed it? Huh? Dean from the lab? This Dean guy must be pretty awesome. When I grow up, I want to be able to fix things just like him. I hope, I hope I meet him so I can thank him properly. Anyway, thank you. All right. Sweet, and with that, that quest is complete. This is Rocco's heartfelt request. But, um, Dean seemed like he had something going on, so let's say we kind of head on back over to Dean and maybe see what's going on with him. Oh, it's you again. Remember how I did you a favor by fixing that pendant? I need to call in that favor. I'm sure you know what this is about. Tell me in greater detail. How should I put this? Basically, I want to have a date, <clears throat> I mean dinner, with Sonya. I'm too embarrassed to ask her myself after all these years. Surely you can help me out after I fix that pendant for you. Alright, and so Dean's shady request. He wants us to speak with Sonya about a date. Great. I don't mind how you do it. Just ask her out to dinner for me. Make sure that your issues will be attended to with haste. Alright, so let's say we go out and meet uh, Sonya back inside of the residential district. So I'll meet you guys on over there. And Sonya's right over here by the ether lamp. So, what's up, Sonya? Hi there. Oh, Dean wants to go to dinner. <laughs> How could you even to say that? To be honest, I'd love to say yes, but the problem is the kids. I can barely find time for myself because they squabble constantly. It's such a silly argument as well. It's all because of a shin gecko. Shin geckos are rare, you see. Then before I knew it, they spotted started arguing over who spotted it first. And while the argument raged on, the shin gecko ran off scared. Maybe if they could each have one as a pet, they'd calm down a bit. Then I feel happy inviting Dean over for dinner. Alright, and we still need one more of these. So this is a uh, item that we can find inside of Tefra Cave. However, if we head over to the military district, I believe at night, and I'm scrolling away from Colony 9 for no apparent reason, we are able to trade from this item. And yeah, I definitely need to change the time uh, just a little bit to um, the night time, I guess. That's just fine. And right over here, right in front of us, we have Meffy Meffy. 
Um, so we will trade with her. And if we scroll through here, we can see that the Shin Gecko is right here. So anything that we can trade will be just fine. Let's see. Let's try to find something that's a little cheaper that we don't quite... Uh, ready coil, we still need those for our quest. Uh, charcoal leg, whatever. It's totally fine. And there we go. So I'll meet you guys back over at Sonya. Alright, what's up, Sonya? Did you manage to find them? Those are perfect. My kids are going to love these. Then they can stop fighting so much. Thank you so much for your help. How about some help? How about this date of mine? Could you go and tell Dean that any time is fine for me? Oh, I'm getting all excited. Alright, so... I guess you guys know where we're heading. I'll meet you guys over with Dean. What's up, Dean? You did it. Now I can finally have a lovely evening with Sonya. I have to hurry if I want to get ready and not be late. I'll give you a reward when I get back. Just wait here. One second, though. Don't wait for me. Ah, oh, I did with Sonya at last. Anyway, uh, I'm not really sure what that whole wink was about, but whatever. Well, that was the quickest dinner I've ever had. Well, it went sort of well, but I can't say it was a major success. Still, she invited me around to her house next time, even if it's only as a babysitter. But I'm not going to give up. I'll take every chance I can get. Alright, and with that, that's Dean's Shady Request. Alright, but that's not everything we want to do in this line of quests just yet. So I'm going to meet you guys uh, in the residential district, actually in front of Dunben's house. Alright, so after completing those two quests... Another quest opens up for us right here with Lillian. It was you who went and helped out for that, that man for Rocco, isn't it? Well, now, it's my favor. It's a favor. Well, now I need a favor. It's for my mom. Now that she's dating that geeky man, I'm worried about her. I think she's forgetting Dad. I assume that from their expression that this matters bothers them. Before Dad died, he told me this. If Mom is ever in trouble, look in the little cave on Agora Shore. Dad must have left something important in that cave. I know it. I have to find it or else Mom will forget all about Dad. So please, could you search for whatever my dad left in that cave? Alright, and this is Lillian's sincere request. So we need to find the message in a bottle on a gore shore at the back of the cave in Colony 9. So please, find whatever it was in that cave and show it to my mom. And um, don't come back until you found it, okay? Alright, so let's uh, do that. Now, I'd rather not start from over here. I'd actually rather probably warp over to like yeah the central plaza and then swim over to agora shore so obviously you guys may remember agora shore is that nasty little area uh out that way in which um we can't actually swim to uh or we can't warp to we can only swim to i can't jump over this but i think i can you know jump down right here to get into the water so let's hop into the water uh and yeah we're gonna be swimming all the way to agora shore and hopefully this doesn't take too long but uh yeah, that quest is actually uh, a little sad, actually. You know, you know the daughter, you know, obviously their father has died, probably seemingly in the Mechon attack, either. And seemingly, I guess, game-wise, like at the beginning of the game, however many days, we don't really know, or in the attack one year ago on Sword Valley. But um, either way, yeah, that the girl is uh, really worried about um, her, her mom uh, forgetting about her dad, which is... A little heart, uh, it's a little touching, I guess I could say, but, um, actually, here we are at Agora Shore now. Um, so, actually, uh, just to show you guys how far we've come, remember that gentle Mother Armu that was way out here? Um, that's a unique monster. Uh, yeah, remember when she was super tough? Okay, I'm not sure what's happening with... I missed that button for some reason, um... And these, my... Gosh, my buttons are not working for some reason. Um... Um, hello? There we go. I, what is happening right now? It's not even... It's my controller right now. I just wanted to fight this because I knew I were going to get a nice item for this. Um, but yeah, she's, like, not super strong anymore. And we can inflict topple uh, with Melia's Starlight Kick, which is just such a good move. Alright, I have to, like, really press these buttons. It's starting to work now. Sometimes my controller will do that for... Seemingly no reason. It's really strange, actually. Um, she's still got quite a good bit of defense, but no spikes or anything, so uh, we're totally fine there. Uh, this little baby here is coming to help, it seems. Uh, it should be fine, though. I think, at least. Um, 
Uh, we're gonna just take her out though, probably. All right, and I think we missed. Uh, but we can use after Starlight Kick for a force topple, and I think we missed. Uh, beautiful. All right. Um, is she shooting Ryan? No, oh, no, she is shooting like the Mother Armids. Just a little weird. Uh, we need to reduce the defense of enemies in. Oh, well, I missed. Never mind. I guess we won't be doing that. Um. Uh, that was bad. Alright, whatever. Um, come on now. Why are we doing so little damage? I don't know. Um, I didn't actually intend to fight her, I guess, originally when I was planning out this video. Um, uh, but I just happened to see her and just wanted to show off just how strong we've gotten since, uh, we've bit last we're here. So, I just wanted to show that off because I thought that was quite interesting. Alright, this, um, let's see, um, so I'm in Bolt. We can get um, bitey bitey, sword drive, and there we go. Actually, that was, yeah, we defeated the gentle mother army. And uh, now we just run because I'm not fighting any more of you. Uh, so we'll just kind of head off this way and uh, you guys can stay far behind. I'm not really too worried about fighting you guys. All right, and there we go. Okay, sweet. All right, now that we've gotten away from them, uh, the cave that we're looking for is actually all the way uh, back over here in kind of like this corner. So let's uh, head over here and you see there's some Antols, uh, but also some Barogs. And then we have Gentle Rodriguez. So we could definitely try to sneak around, but that's not happening. So another fight with a unique monster coming up here. Uh, so let's do this then. Um, now my camera is not seemingly helping too much. Um, what is happening right now? Can we even force a topple here? Ooh, we did actually. Whoa. I just don't think Ricky and um, Ryan together do enough damage, I would say. Um, so Ether up three here on this one attack. It's just not doing a lot. We really do need Shulk in the party for fights like this. Um, but uh, I did want to. Uh, put some new members in the party, especially while we're doing side quests, because I want to help with their affinity charts uh, with each other a little bit more. So that's mostly why you'll see me uh, move around the party uh, between episodes when it comes to like side questing and things like that. Mostly just because uh, it helps out with um, the affinity charts uh, and bringing all those up. So that's a uh, really good for us. Um, man, that topple art for Melia is really really nice. Um, I actually, we're about halfway through this fight now. Um, it's kind of important, I guess, but also at the same time, it's not incredibly important that we, like, take care of this fight, like, right now. Or that I show this fight, I guess. So, um, I may just, well, actually, we're doing quite a lot, and uh, our damage has been boosted because of elemental discharge, I guess. Um, uh, though I do think we just lost the ability to use Starlight Kick. Yeah, we did. Whoops. Because uh, I accidentally used an elemental discharge in there. Right, I'm just kind of spamming arts, and uh, I think we actually can spam here to the end. I was going to say I'll cut ahead um, in order to do, um, or just kind of skip ahead, but whatever. Um, we're almost done anyway, so what the heck does it matter? Um, like, one or two more attacks. Ooh, we got a topple, and there we go. Sweet. Uh, that's it. Um, wow, that frog is huge. Anyway, uh, and that is the message in a bottle. Ooh, we got some gear as well. Not bad, not bad. Um, so let's head back to the entrance of Pulling Nine. And did the entire map fill in? Oh, the entire map is filled in. I never even noticed that. We discovered all the um, waypoints here. So um, the entire map of Colony Nine has uh, filled in. That's pretty cool. Oh, we need to change the time in order to get Lillian to show back up. It's Oh, it's 4 o'clock in game time. Wow. Uh, we'll change it back to 10, and yeah, here she is. You found it. So what's inside? A recipe for cabbage parcels. It's not what I'd imagine it to be, but I know it's a reminder of Dad. Could you show it to Mom for me? All right, so obviously we need to head right over here to Sonya uh, and show her this recipe. So here you are, Sonya. Can I help you with something? Hold on, this is the recipe I gave my husband before we were married. 
So he's me back. I remember the very day I gave it to him. He said he wanted to eat my cabbage parcels every day. So I went ahead and wrote down the recipe I gave him and gave it to him. That way, he could make it himself anytime he liked, I said. He looked at me, dropped on one knee, took my hand and said, I'm proposing to you, you silly nincompoop. Cabbage parcels were his way of saying he wanted to marry me. When he finished talking, I just burst out laughing. I see why Lillian's been worried recently, but I'll never forget him. For my own child to do this makes me feel like a bad parent. Thank you for telling me about it. I should have realized sooner. Alright, so we can go talk to Lillian one more time. Uh, and that should complete up this quest. The reminder of Dad? Yay, you're the best. I have some help. Thanks, I mean it. Now we can get back to being a family again. And with that, the quest is complete. So, I got swimming oil. I can almost guarantee that that's some sort of swimsuit. But anyway, um, that is not everything that I want to do in the way of quest here inside of Colony 9. Though there is one very large quest that is well worth our time. It actually takes place here, and I, and I just hope that we have enough affinity for this quest. So, uh, let me head over to where our next quest objective is, and I'll meet you guys on over there. Alright, so our next quest objective is actually right over here with Desiree. Um, but, uh, as you'll see, she doesn't have an icon over her head. It's because in order to open up this quest, we have to have um, t talked to her at least one time, both, um, uh, at least one time total and then one time after completing up um everything around colony six because um she's got some actually pretty good stuff about lore here and um i kind of want to say this till now and uh, i haven't mentioned it anywhere else because i kind of wanted to save it for here so um and you can go the entirety of xenoblade chronicles without ever knowing this and it's not required for you to know anything like this but um uh, even my first playthrough i never found this out so um i think this is a pretty good little bit of information so let's talk to desiree if you don't mind listening, I'd like to get something off my chest. My dad, he'd swing a hammer over his head all day every day. He used to be build and fix machines and was really good at it too. Here in his own place, Swordsmithy he called it. The best one in the entire colony, everyone said it. But he died a year ago in the war. I couldn't even keep his shop open. I had to close it down. That's why it's vital that I at least find something to do with my life. You know, talking about it made me feel a lot better. Think it, I'll think it over some more. Alright, and so, after doing that, um, yeah, so we learned that, turns out, Zord, at least, uh, using some context clues, that Zord, the mechon that we faced, the face mechon we faced back when we first met Juju and Sharla, turns out to actually have been Desiree's father, um, and he had mentioned some things, and based on his, um, the way that he speaks and things like that, and the way he kind of remembers some things about his past life, uh, yeah, that just kind of adds it all together, so, it's actually a little sad, actually, if you think about it, that, um, but anyway, so, uh, but that's not everything, though. We do want to talk to her one more time. Ever since Betty got married, I never get to see her anymore. I don't think that's the only reason, but still, I miss her dearly. And, yeah, so, uh, for certain quests, I do want to mention this really quickly because the icon just showed up. Before I can finish talking to her, um, I do want to mention the fact that um, certain quests don't exactly have, like, four-star affinity. Like, sometimes you need four and a half stars of affinity, um, and talking to Desiree gave us a little bit more affinity, just enough to get us over the barrier that we needed for her quest line. So, um, I do want to mention that. So, like, this quest needs four and a half stars of affinity. And you can't see that on the affinity chart, but, uh, it is a thing. So, I mean, talking to that, talking to her just one more time got us just enough experience or affinity to, uh, open up our quest. But anyway, I really need some advice. Actually, no, don't worry about it. Really, it's Shulk I'd like to speak to. What's up with everybody wanting to speak with Shulk today? I... I mean, I know he's, like, wielded with a Monado and everything, but Jesus, is he really that popular? Anyway, what's up, Desiree? Shulk, you've been doing a lot of good deeds lately. The helpless and the hopeless alike, you fix their problems. I'm not exactly that desperate, but I'm a bit lost at the moment. It's been a year now. I need to decide what I'm doing with my life. That doesn't sound good. <laughs> Shulk, I'm so confused. It's been getting to me recently. Can I ask your advice? I know you're bad with machines, but you can do other things. You don't need to worry. It's not just about money. I saw my dad's shop, and that's left me in an okay situation for now. Wait, that's not what I wanted to talk about. Come on, Shulk, listen to me. Alright, and so this is Desiree's future. Since her father passed away, 
Um, I'm not actually reading that. Never mind. Uh, but we need to listen to Desiree's long story. Thanks. This could be a bit of a long chat, so bear that in mind. Alright, so let's immediately turn around and speak to her. I know I'm always wandering around out here at night, but it's not just for the sake of it. I have a good reason. I'm mulling over my future. I'm pulling as hard as I can, in the hope that I can figure it all out. Narrowing down the options is so difficult. It's taking about the same amount of time you've spent fighting. If you tell me about it... If you let me tell you about it, we can both take a short break. It's fine with me. It is? Thanks. You always do make such a good listener. I'm getting to the point where I've narrowed it down to two options. But now I can't decide between them. I spent forever thinking it over. I just can't know which, for sure which one is the best suit for me. So you don't go crazy unless someone helps me choose. You can see the problem. I knew you would. Anyways, next time we chat, I'll tell you all the details. Alright, and we'll talk to her again immediately. Okay, so the first path, career path I'm considering is the defense for. Don't tell me. Your first thought was, her? A soldier? No way. Well, think again. Actually, a really good shot. The lieutenant even told me I'd be an expert if I signed up. There are some drawbacks. One, fighting is really dangerous. Fine, that one's a bit obvious. Two, I'm very bad with machines. What if it turns out I can't service my gun properly? I won't even be able to train. But if it works out, I can do alright for myself. The pay is good, and I think I'd enjoy the lifestyle. Those are definitely some good arguments on both sides. Do you mind if I think it over? Not at all. I've certainly spent long enough doing that. Alright, and we need to immediately talk to her again before she gets away. Right. The other career path I'm trying to go down is... Being a sculptor. Don't laugh. I've been budding... I have a budding interest in it. I come dependent out of wood. I wouldn't say I'm that good yet, but it's so much fun. I can become Kenny Rowan's pupil and learn properly. There are options... There are problems with this option too, though. One, it doesn't pay very well. At all. Two, it's not exactly the most social of activities. I probably have nobody to talk to all day but my own sculptures. Possibly not the best career path I'm trying to land a man. But I do enjoy it a lot. Let everything work out. Nice one, Shulk. Keep the good work. Of course. Nothing they can stop us once we get going. Do you mind? I know my explanation is a bit long-winded and annoying. But it's just because it matters to me so, so much to me. Let's take a deep breath and carry on. I'm nearly finished. Realistically, I'm sure I'd be able to do either job. I have an innate ability for one and a keen interest in the other. I guess there's no wrong answer. They both have their ups and downs. That's exactly why it's so hard to decide. He picked for me instead. For me? But it's your entire life we're talking about. It's, it's your life we're talking about. Your entire life. Don't worry. I won't have a grudge against you. In fact, I won't have any regrets. Whatever you decide, I'll do it and never look back. But there's no hurry. I'll wait until you've thought about it properly. Alright, um, though I think we've already made our decision, so obviously we have a bit of a choice to make here. Okay, so what career route do you think would suit me best? Um, so these are going to have different effects on the... Uh, I don't think they have any sort of effect on the affinity chart as long as I'm aware. I don't think. Maybe they do. Actually, I'm probably going to err on the side that they do. Um, though I do know that um, in terms of what we want to do and like the quests that are going to open up down the road, um, we're going to want to pick the soldier as our answer. I think I'm a good soldier. It would feel nice to be able to protect people. Maybe I'll even find a nice soldier boy. That part's just between us. Becoming a soldier could set me up for life. Good idea. You're welcome. But I don't think I actually did anything. Oh, stop being so pessimistic. Just give me the push I needed. Now I sort of wish I hadn't. What if it all goes wrong? Don't worry too much, Shulk. It'll be fine, I guarantee. I never realized before, but you're pessimistic as well sometimes. I think it's nice in a way. It shows how kind and caring you are. But most of the time, it's still better to be confident in yourself. You're right. We should remember to talk, take your own advice, Desiree. True. I really have to do my best in my new career. Otherwise, I'll be eroding your self-confidence as well as mine. So thanks for the motivation I need. So, thanks for everything. Alright. And with that, the quest is complete. And we recommend that Desiree join the Defense Force. Uh, but not only that, Shulk's pessimism skill branch has been unlocked. So, yeah, also, yeah, you have more than just three skill branches. We also have four. So this one improves ether defense. Um, and this one is very, very good. So, ooh, actually, we've got quite a lot here with Shulk as well. Um, but, yeah, pessimism. Uh, we have fighting the future. Extends time before visuals become a reality. Very good uh, skill to have. Stealth Warrior reduces aggro drawn from music and arts. Also really good. 10%. 
every time an art is used. That's absolutely incredible for sure. Uh, burst affinity after an after evasion, so that's uh, really good. Epic evasion, forced mercy, reduced aggro when damage is taken. Another really good art. Twenty five per or skill, sorry, a very good skill for Shulk as well. Um, for twenty five percent, and then finally immunization grants immunity to debuffs that reduce stats. Also very very good. So we're definitely going down this route. So yeah, this game has more than just three um. A uh, skill branches and so or skill trees I guess or whatever you want to call them um, But yeah, so that is uh, Shulk. So he's got pessimism and you can go the entire game without ever unlocking this or even knowing that it exists Which is really crazy. So um, just to make sure everyone else is still doing fine on their skill trees everyone is locking up unlocking some other things so um, let's See Dunban here everyone else seems to be pretty good. I'll look at some skill links uh, a little bit later But uh, right now I think I'd kind of rather leave that alone if I can but um with that uh, that is everything I want to do here inside of colony 9 so uh we could do some stuff with Desiree now I guess um but we, she just made a pretty big decision in her life so I think uh we'll just kind of come back to her periodically because uh, we don't want to kind of bug her too much she's just joined the defense force so kind of let her get started maybe uh before we continue but there is one more thing that I want to do, um, and that is, first of all, change up the party just a bit. Uh, we'll just move Ricky out for Dumb Man, so we're kind of the way we ended uh, the last episode, I guess. But the reason I want to do this is because we have a heart-to-heart -heart right over here that I want to view. Um, and this is Heir to the Monado between Ryan and Don Man. Something up, Dunban. Losing your home. It's a painful experience, and not lightly forgotten. The people of Colony 6 have had a rough time of it. Exactly. And we could have lost our homes to the Mekon just as easily. If it wasn't for Shulk. Indeed. Shulk tucking the Minato in hand was a decisive moment. If he hadn't done that, we probably would have lost everything. It's a miracle that the Banana was in the colony at all. If it hadn't been, our homes would have no doubt be piles of rubble right now. Just like Colony 6. I think of those walking piles of scrap ruining our homes. God, it makes my blood boil. I find it hard to imagine living here in such danger as Charlotte did. Hope kept her going. Hope? It is a rare thing amongst us homes of late. Charlotte was looking after that camp, waiting for Gatto to return. That's what kept her going. I hope you're rebuilding the colony together with him. You'd be right. Sounds like you know a lot about Charla. She's strong, that woman. Stronger than I'll ever be. She's more proud of her than she looks. It doesn't take much to break her will. But you can be the one to pick her back up again. What? Me? Now you're just talking crazy, Dunban. I just have a feeling about you. Just keep that thought in mind. Um, changing the subject. Why don't you help out with Colony 6 Reconstruction? They could do it with a helping hand from a genuine hero. Well, when you put it that way, how can I refuse? Let's get to it, Ryan. Oh, what a touching moment between those two. Alright, so... And, um... Yeah, so that, like I said, that was a touching moment. But uh, I do think, though, that with that, that is pretty much going to do it all for this episode here. So we got quite a lot of things done. But in the next episode, we're heading off to Colony 6 to do some more reconstruction. And then we'll head off for Air the Sea once more to take care of a, uh, a, a, a segment of quests that we can take care of um, now that we've completed up what we've done so far. So all that's going to happen inside of the next episode. And I realize I didn't do a very good job of explaining Air the Sea. You guys will see in the next episode so uh but like i said that's all gonna happen inside of the next episode so if you guys did like this part a like rating would be greatly appreciated it's helped the channel a lot and if you want to see more content like this please do consider subscribing but once again guys my name is connor thank you so much for watching and i'll catch you in the next one